Hey guys, what is up? It's Alex and today we're going to be going over an in-depth overview on the buttons and controls in a 2021 Subaru Legacy Touring. Now these buttons and controls are going to be very similar to the 22 because they haven't changed much. So if you're about to buy a new Legacy or order a new Legacy, then this is going to be relevant to that as well. It's also going to share details with you on the infotainment display and controls, which is going to be the exact same as a 21 or 22 Outback. Also, if you guys are new to my channel and you enjoy super related content, then please consider clicking that subscribe button down below. If you get value out of this video, I'd really appreciate it if you click the like button. That really helps me out. And without further ado, let's dive into this. And if you guys have any questions about anything in this video or any super related topics, then just leave them down in the comment section below and I'll be sure to answer that for you. So as I've already mentioned, this is a touring trim level. And actually what's cool about the touring trim is not only the different appearance package, so you have the aluminum brush mirror caps, but whenever you lock your mirrors or lock your car, I should say, your mirrors actually fold in automatically. And there's also a button on the inside of the car I'll show you here in just a moment where you can uh, open and close this foldable mirror. Say if you're trying to get into a tight parking spot, that could be necessary. This trim level also has a cool feature unique to it, which is the front facing camera. So this has a 180 degree angle that will allow you to see when you're going out of a parking spot, maybe you're in a tight spot, you've got a car on this side and on this side, leaving the grocery store and you can't see down the aisle way. Well, with that camera, you'll be able to see in front of you more easily. And then this feature that I'm gonna show you isn't specifically unique to the Touring. You can also get it in the Limited and some of the higher uh, trim package premium options. And that's the keyless access. I've actually made a more in-depth video on this. You can click on that YouTube card above or wait till the end, watch the video after you watch this one and check out more details on that. But what's cool about it, just the main thing, is that you have the ability to get in and out of your car, lock it and unlock it without having to actually uh, click any buttons. So there's actually proximity sensors here. Since I have the key in my pocket close to me, it automatically unlocks. You can see the mirror automatically unfolds. And when you're getting out of the car, you can quickly lock it just by putting your finger right here. And that'll lock and fold those mirrors in. The keyless access fob also has an unlock button here for your hatch, or in this case, the trunk. But if you click and hold it, it'll pop it open for you so you can get things easily while you're carrying groceries. If you have a Forester, an Outback on our scent that has the hatch with the power tailgate, it'll actually work in the same way. You can open and close this with the uh, key fob button right here. Since this is the Touring trim, it comes with the option for the tan interior. So it's got the black carpeted mats with the tan trim around the piece, has the cargo tray back here, and it also has a spare tire. These seats in the back do have an all weather protection on the backing. They call it a rear seat back protector. It's Velcroed on and strapped around the headrest. You can get that on any Subaru as an accessory. So you can even get a base model and have that added as an accessory. If you pull these levers, it'll release the latch there where you can reach up and push the seat down from the inside. And that's on both sides. And this is what the rear seats look like with them folded down. As you can see, you've got that all weather protection there. So you can just pull these out when they get dirty, hose them off and put them back in. The second row passengers do have heated seats and the limited in the touring trim with your vent controls right here. And then of course you do have your USB inputs for charging devices. Upon entering the car, I'll show you some of these controls down here. This controls your driver's side seat position. So you can go back, forward, up, and down, and you can even tilt the seat. And then this controls the seat back right here. So you can push that forward and back. And then this controls your lumbar support. Over here on the left-hand side, you do have your memory seat and mirror controls. So you can actually save your memory seats and your mirrors with these buttons. There's a couple of different ways to do that. There's even a way to do that with your key fob with the, the proximity sensors. So if you wanna check that out, click on the YouTube card above. It'll send you to a video that I did going over that more in depth where you can save your memory seats with your key fob. And if you guys have any questions on that, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. I can always send you a link to a video showing you how to do that if you can't quite find it. The left-hand side, you have your mirror controls. So that will actually 
control your left mirror and your right mirror. You've got your unlock and lock button. This right here is your power foldable mirror button. So if you get into a parking space, you back in, you're in a tight spot in a, maybe a parking garage, you wanna make sure nobody blows your mirror off. You can click that and it'll fold it in. And if you unclick it, it just folds it back out like normal. These buttons are pretty self-explanatory, but I always like to point out that this has four power automatic windows. So one click and it will roll that window down and one pull or click up and it'll roll that window up. So that's the passenger rear window. And you also have the ability to lock your passenger windows, including the front passenger. So if you ever have dogs or children in your car and you wanna make sure they're not accidentally rolling the windows up and down, you can lock it here. I'm gonna go over some of the controls here on the steering wheel for you, and then I'm gonna show you some of the controls over here on the infotainment display. So on your steering wheel, you have to the right your cruise control buttons. So this actually will turn on and off your cruise control, and you'll see a little icon, a little car icon up here to tell you it's on and off. That will actually allow you to set your cruise. So once you reach your desired speed, say it's 60 miles an hour down the highway, you click down, that will set your speed and keep it at 60. To deactivate your cruise control, just like in any other car, you can click this button or tap the brake and it'll turn it off. Now, because your car has EyeSight, all new Subarus have EyeSight as a standard, even base models. You've got cameras on the left and the right, and that detects objects in front of you. So that will actually allow for automatic braking, pre-collision throttle response, and help you avoid a collision. And what that will do, you'll see these little lines up in front of you, that will actually dictate the distance between you and the car in front of you. So say you've got your cruise control set at 60 and the car in front of you starts slowing down to 50 or maybe they even come to a complete stop. Your car will identify that and slow down automatically. And the way that you can adjust your distance between the front of your car and the car in front of you is with these up and down arrows. So right now it's set at the furthest distance with four lines, but if you want your car to get a little bit closer before it starts slowing down, you can go down to one line or maybe two or three. So you can adjust this to however you're most comfortable with it. And then over here, this little steering wheel icon, you'll see it light up, it says ready. This will actually use those same cameras on the left and the right side and look for lines on the left and the right side to use your power steering and keep you gently in your lane. You have full control of the vehicle at all times. If you ever need to merge, you would just merge like usual, it'll deactivate. Or if you put your blinker on left or right, it will deactivate. I just realized I used the blinkers and said that backwards, but you know what I mean. On the left-hand side, you have your volume, your voice controls, and your channel controls for your radio. So whenever you are listening to the radio, you can go over here, you've got FM, AM, and Sirius XM. And you can quickly toggle between those with this source button right here. So that'll change to Sirius XM. And now I'll click the source button again, to change back over to FM. So you can change your source right there. You can change your channel with this button right here. And then this is for your voice command. So when you connect your phone through Bluetooth, you can actually use voice command to make phone calls and actually receive and make text messages all without having your phone out. Down here on the left-hand side of the steering wheel, you have this up arrow and down arrow, and that will allow you to toggle between different vehicle information up on the top part of the digital display. Over here on the right-hand side of the steering wheel, you have this trigger button, which will actually turn on your heated steering wheel. It'll light up orange when it's on and it won't be lit up whenever it's turned off. It's about 90 degrees, so we're gonna make sure we keep that off today. Down here on the left part of your dash, you have your trunk lid, so that will unlock and open your trunk. This will adjust your brightness display for your, your dash and your infotainment. You'll be able to see that at night. And on your left stock, you have your lights with your fog lights over here. So this controls your lights. We have it on auto and this controls your fog lights. To have your brights on, you just click it forward like that to turn it off do that now with the auto setting if your brights are on at night and you have oncoming traffic those eyesight cameras will detect that you've got somebody in front of you and it'll automatically dim your lights so you're not blinding the person in front of you so it does have automatic high beam assist on the right stock you have your windshield wiper controls so this will actually turn on your windshield wipers with you clicking up or down you also have paddle shifters to shift up and down in gears you've got upshift and downshift over there. And the way you do this is by putting your car in drive and then over to the left 
into manual mode and then you can use those uh, paddle shifters. That's more so to replace the high and low gear. So it helps if you're on a, a hill where you'd want to be able to control your gears while also keeping your hand on the wheel. Down here in the center console, you have your electronic parking brake. To activate that, you just pull up, it'll light up red. It'll also light up on the dash to tell you that it's active. And to deactivate that, you put your foot on the brake and just press down and that will turn off. This car is equipped with wireless charging. So it has this little wireless charging pad right here. And if you have a phone that's equipped with wireless charging, you can just put it there. It'll charge automatically for you. You do also have your auxiliary input and two USB inputs for charging cables. This will also, when your phone is connected to the USB input for charging, it'll also display your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto up on the screen so you can have navigation. Over here is that button for the front facing camera. So you click that and it will actually show you up here on the screen a wide angle of what's in front of you. When you put the car in reverse, you'll see that this car has RAB, which is reverse automatic braking, and that will actually automatically brake for you when you have an object behind you. This over here is a parking sensor, so that will automatically, visibly and audibly alert you on the screen when you have somebody behind you, say if you're backing out of a driveway or a parking spot. And to turn either of these on or off, you just click and hold, and it'll turn it off. Now that will default on unless you go into the settings to default it to turn off. Up here, you have this infrared display and if your car is equipped with the memory seats and driver focus then it will have this infrared display up here which will actually automatically set your mirror and seating position to your desired preference so it uses facial recognition to do that it's a really cool setup i made an in-depth video showing you how to set this up for your legacy or your outback if you click on that youtube card above it'll send you to the link to watch that video and show you how to do it so down below on your infotainment display you have your climate control buttons this is primarily digital but you do have your analog controls right here for both you and the passenger you can use your fan speed right here. You can also click into this and adjust your fan speed right here and your vent position right here. And you can, you've got a quick on and off button right here. That's always displayed. You have a quick on and off for your AC. And then you also have, this car in particular is equipped with heated and ventilated seats. So you have the three settings for heated seats, three settings for ventilated. So whenever you click onto that, this is high, medium, low, and off. And you do have the ability to sync up your front passenger seat. So if you adjust the temperature over here, it's gonna adjust it over there as well. You also have a quick auto start stop button where you can turn it on and off. So that will actually shut your engine off whenever you are at a complete stop, whenever that's lit up green. So in order to turn that off, you just click it like that and make sure it's not lit up green. Now that will default on at all times. So if you turn the car off and turn it back on, just like this, you'll see your auto start stop is turned back on. It's lit up green. If you click on the uh, car icon over here, this will pull up a lot of your main vehicle information and, and vehicle safety controls. So you have VDC, which is your traction control. You have cruise control characteristics. This is the speed that your car will speed up once the lead car in front of you gets out of the way and your car wants to speed back up to the original speed that you set on cruise. So you can change this over here. Economy mode will make your car speed back up at a slower pace. Standard and dynamic will make your car speed up at a, at a faster pace. AVH is auto vehicle hold. This is one of those things you just have to test out to really see how it works, but whenever that's turned on, it'll light up green over here and say AVH. And whenever you come to a complete stop at a long red light, you're waiting for a train, or maybe you're picking kids up from school and you're waiting in a, a line, you're sitting in traffic, you can actually release your foot off the brake and the vehicle will hold with the electronic brake. And then whenever you wanna proceed, you just give it gas and take off. The steering responsive headlights are on as a standard, so that's great if you're on back roads, going around corners, your, your steering wheel, your headlights will actually go with the pace of your steering wheel and turn left or right around corners. There's another location to turn your auto start stop off and on, so same as this right here. 
If you click on driving assistance, you'll be able to see you have the pre-collision braking. So that's the eyesight up here. If you wanted to turn that off for whatever reason, you can turn it on and off right there. If you wanna change your uh, alerts for the lane departure function, so whenever the vehicle will alert you when you're on the left or the right too far and going outside of the lane, you can adjust those warnings here with a buzzer and a visible warning. BSD and RCTA, that stands for blind spot detection and rear cross traffic alert. So that is whenever you're backing up, that's that feature that I was telling you over here. So if you turn that off in the infotainment display, it'll actually keep that off right here. Other will show you some more information where you can personalize things such as warning volumes, units, and the driver monitoring system, which is this up here. So if you ever wanted to turn the driver monitoring system off, you can click that and turn it off. We'll click the home button. That'll bring us back to our main display. It's just like your phone. If you click on this home button, it brings you back to your main display. You have Maps, which is powered by TomTom. Tom. But if you want to use your Apple CarPlay and use Google Maps, you can just plug it up to the USB input down below. Radio, you have your FM, AM and Sirius XM radio. And you can preset your favorite channels just by clicking and holding. Over here you have media. So if you have a CD or an iPod connected, you can actually display that there. And the center console, if your Outback or Legacy has the CD player, will have the CD player right there. This one in particular has it. You can connect your phone through Bluetooth by clicking phone and going to the Bluetooth settings on your phone. Under apps, you'll be able to see your My Subaru app, the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which are not lit up right now, but whenever your phone's connected down there, those will light up. The My Subaru app will actually be active for you with your phone if you pay for the remote start feature. If you have the keyless access, you can pay for a remote start. It is active through your phone. So you still have to do a remote start through your phone. You don't have to have a separate key fob for it. Uh, but with the new car, it's $75 for the first three years. And that also includes roadside assistance. So that's really low cost to have the remote start features and the ability to adjust your climate control. Under car info, you'll see different driving statistics under advanced package. This will just tell you more about your car. So you can click on any of these items here and it'll tell you what it means. So lane departure warning, it'll give you a long description of it. So there's a ton of different things here. I won't go through all of them, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Maintenance is a good one to know how to access because this is gonna show you your maintenance schedule. So you can set your uh, mileage and date for whenever you wanna get your oil changed or oil filter, tires, etc. So that about covers it for the digital display. You do have your analog volume controls and tune controls here. This is your front defrost. This is your rear window defrost as well as your heated side mirrors. And up here on your mirror, this one has the home link. So it has three different buttons to sync up three different garage door openers with your mirror. And then right here you have, it'll light up green. This is your auto dimming mirror. So when you have bright lights coming behind you, it'll automatically dim. If you wanna turn that off, you just click it, turn it off. You have your sunglass holder up here, your dome lights on both your side and the passenger side. You have your power moonroof right here. And then up here, this switch is for your dome lights to turn them automatically on or off with the door open. The SOS and the I button, this is for your Starlink subscription. So if you get roadside assistance, which you will automatically get it for free for three years on a new Subaru, you'll have the option to click these buttons and be able to call out to somebody to help you with a flat tire or if you run out of gas. So that pretty much covers the main controls on this car. Again, this is relevant for a Legacy or an Outback in the 21 and 22 model year. If you guys have any questions, then please leave them down in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer that for you or maybe even make a dedicated video to answer your specific question. If you haven't done so already, please smash the like button, subscribe down below, and I'll see you in the next one.